Oh, hello there, Richard, and everybody else not named Richard. I am Anthony, and today we're here for a book review. But before we get started, Jimmy, roll the intro. So, what you just heard was the Star Wars theme, because yeah, today we're talking about nerds. So, um, this book that I'm going to review is uh, about nerds. It's called Little Brother. It's a dystopian no a novel from uh, Cory Doctorow, who is a Canadian writer. So, um, first, let me uh, make a not-so-quick summary of the plot. So, it's the story of Marcus Yalo, who's uh, a 17-year-old uh, geek, uh, basically. And... Um, one day, Marcus decides that he wants to get out of school and go play a real-life video game with his friends. So, since he's a geeky guy and he knows technology a lot, he knows how to get around his school's uh, high-tech security um, surveillance uh, cameras and stuff. And he gets out with uh, Vanessa, Daryl, and Yolu to go out in the city and play a real time real life video game so uh he gets to a certain uh po- to a certain uh, place in the city where there's a, a bridge and he actually gets t- caught near um the the site of the worst uh, terrorist attack to ever in the united states in san francisco so um as the the the, the crowd just uh, goes everywhere and runs around. His friend gets stabbed and he needs to get help. So he actually goes in the middle of the street where there are cars uh, going around and he stops a military car. People get out and they get taken away. So they get blindfolded, taken on a boat and like imprisoned somewhere on an island that they don't know. Well, they don't know where they are. So they... Um, get interrogated by, by um, what is called the DHS, the Department of Homeland Security, which is a branch of the U.S. government in charge of uh, terrorist attacks. So they are captured by their own government, uh, interrogated, nearly tortured, what is like a non-violent form of, uh, of torture, and they are later released uh, because uh, the soldiers there don't have enough proofs against them. But they are told that if they ever talk about this thing again, well, they're going to get captured again and sent away in Syria. To never be seen again. So, uh, Marcus gets out and realizes that, well, there's Vanessa there, there's Yolu there, but Daryl's still missing. And they've been missing for three days. Their parents all think they were dead. Um, so, when he gets out, Marcus um, realizes that his city, his beloved city, has turned into a military-controlled city. And it's controlled by the DHS, who is afraid of uh, another terrorist attack. And Marcus is against that, because he finds out that, well, one of his best friends is missing. And he was captured by his own government, and he thinks that's against his right of freedom. So, he wants to fight back. And... Um, well, that does not please everybody in his group, like uh, um, mainly Vanessa, who thinks it's better to be calm and not do anything, to follow the rules. But Marcus is not like that. So um, he, well, he finds out that all his technological stuff is wired, so he can't use it anymore. So he decides to start a, a new thing um, on his Xbox called... XNet, so it's a new operating system that uh, basically lets you uh, go incognito on the web. It's all encrypted, um, encrypted messaging. So people um, get on the server and are allowed to play games to talk with each other, like uh, like if they were uh, basically on on a computer. Um, yeah. Uh, Marcus then goes around the city and delivers disk of this operating system to get his movement growing. And he does that um, a lot. And then um, the police arrests him. They, uh, they, they tell him that he has an irregular travel pattern. And Marcus is all like, 
fussed up about it. Uh, he he goes around and like he doesn't know how they they got information about his travel his traveling habits, and he discovers that uh, the DHS can actually track people's uh, traveling uh, via their uh, transport cards, like uh, flash pass, um, subway passes, bus cards. And Marcus decides to invent a little um, thingy uh, uh, that can um, that can screw with those um, the chips in the the cards, and that can um, well kind of screw the DHS uh, up and um, make them unable to follow people around. And so. Um, Mar Marcus just releases that on the Xnet, and his movement gets growingly, uh, well, grows and gets uh, more and more important. And then, um, but then Marcus finds himself, uh, well, with this growing fame, he finds himself not protected enough. So he decides to build uh, the ultimate form of uh, encryption on the web, which is a web of trust. So he gets with some of his friends and some of his friends' friends and they they just like bond. <laughs> That's weird said like that, but they just like bond in this uh, secret vow that uh, is kind of a complicated text uh, thing, tech thing, but they they basically are able to share encrypted data with each other without anybody knowing like not even the government with it with their uh, special stuff so and well at this meeting this bonding marcus meets with angie we falls in love with and that gives another complexion to the story but i'm not going to go any farther things eat up a lot more after that this is just like a quick a quick bite that you can get uh, uh, to the story and well if you're interested in it definitely go buy it if you're interested in that little piece that I gave you def it's definitely a good read for you now why was Dr. Rose's novel such a fit for me well I must say uh, this book is really accessible since uh, it is um, designed for uh, a teenage audience but it treats with the uh, themes that are um, really uh, mature like uh, freedom like uh, well obviously teenage problems but uh, like uh, the right of uh, the government to get in our private lives and things like that so it's um it, it is uh, easy to read but it has complicated themes that can um, that can please a an older audience um, it contains a lot of uh, nerdy things but for those of you who are not computer nerds don't be stressed out this author does a great job of simplifying anything that may be too complicated to common people plus this has some great references to the book that basically set the tone for dystopian novels george orwell's 1984 even the title is a major reference to it so you may ask did i like the book hell yeah would i recommend it well if you like the dystopian genre Go for it. This is a great read. But if you're not really into tech or freedom or teenagers saving America, then this may not be what you're looking for. Well, finally, I give this book a 9 out of 10. This was really a solid book for me. Maybe the best one I've read all year. And to me, it was even better than George Orwell's 1984 because it was much more immersive. But then again, I'm a teenager reading it, teenage-related uh, books, so I may not be the, the best critic for this. Um, that was it. Hope you enjoyed the review. Have a pleasant evening. Anthony, signing out.